If you're trying to upgrade your alternator from the old 1G style to the 3G style, gets rid of the external regulator, puts it internal, as well as gives you higher output and more reliability, this is the video for you. I don't care if you're driving the Mustang from back in the 60s, a Cougar, something like that, to any of the cars throughout the 70s, trucks, vans, all the way up to about 87. If it's got a V-belt and it's a Ford, this video will help you. Engine, 289, 302, 351. Maybe you've got a 300 in line six. I'm personally doing this installation in a 69 or a 73 IDI diesel Ford truck. All right, guys, so what all do you need to do a 3G alternator swap? Well, first off, I found this 3G upgraded alternator on Amazon for $90. The easiest thing that I've found to search for is a 95 Ford Taurus with a 3.8 V6 engine. I do suggest before you go ordering this alternator, do a quick Google search just to make sure that this same one will fit your vehicle. I don't own every single Ford vehicle. I just mainly do the 6.9 and the 7.3 diesels. So do your own homework. Do a little bit of verification before you go spending your money, guys. Next off, you're going to need a mega fuse. You're going to want at least 175, 180 amp mega fuse. I found this one on Amazon with three extra fuses for just $8.99. Then, to fit into this alternator, you're going to need these two plugs here. I found them on Amazon for $12.00. And then you're going to need some 4 gauge inverter wires with a 5 16 inch end. And those, you're going to want them a set of uh, 24 inchers if you've got a stock truck. I got 4 footers because my batteries and everything are inside my cab because I'm building a race truck. But I'm upgrading to the 3G alternator because it simplifies my wiring. It gets rid of the external regulator. It gives me less wires, less things to hassle with and deal with, and a more reliable, higher output alternator. I've done this swap cheaper with junkyard parts in the past, but A, it's getting really hard to find these older 90s vehicles in the junkyard to pull the parts off of, and next off, I only spent $130 in all brand new parts to do this swap, so it's well worth the money. Find your green with the red stripe wire and cut it off right down here by the voltage regulator. Next off, find the power lead that comes from the alternator harness up and to your solenoid and undo that. This truck here is a 6.9. Some of the stuff looks a little bit different on a 7.3, but it's still going to be the same process. This is what it looks like on a 7.3. Just a few less wires because the glow plug system has been moved. Green with red wire. Cut that wire, and then you're going to take the lead off here. I've already undone the voltage regulator here. And the wiring basically only feeds the alternator and it also has a clip here that goes down to the tack sensor. Once I get all this out, I'm still going to separate out the tack wiring. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and remove all of it. First, use the 5 16 and remove this hose clamp holder deal. Now, we're using the 9 16 and backing out this top bolt. Now the bottom bolt is a 5 8 We'll go ahead and back it out. Now this whole alternator should come up and out of there. Unfortunately, this brand new alternator comes with the wrong kind of pulley. We need a V-belt pulley and this is the grooved style. So I'm going to go ahead and use my impact. I've got a 24 millimeter socket on there and we'll try to back off the nut oh that was quite easy and the pulley popped right off guys so now we'll switch it to the v-belt one out of the truck so brought the alternator in here to the shop 
I'm gonna try to get this pulley pulled off of there. 24 millimeter socket. That old one put up a little more of a fight, but the Milwaukee had it. So off with the bolt and pulley just pulled right off too. Alrighty guys, so I got the pulley swapped over. Got it tightened up. Now, with that terminal that we purchased, it's very easy. The white one goes to the other white terminal that came with the set. So you just use a butt connector. The yellow, it needs a ring terminal on it. And then the green, you're going to want to go into the green with red striped wire on the fender well of your truck that comes out of the truck's wiring harness. This is a switched power. So when the key's on, it gets power. When the key's off, it doesn't get power. First, we plug in that connector. We loop that white wire right over and connect the other end. The yellow wire wraps right back around and to the red output post of the alternator. That's the same post that we're gonna run our four gauge charging cable from that to our mega fuse. So we're just about ready to go back together, but the ends of my four gauge charge wire don't quite want to clear these plastic edges. So I'm going to use a grinder and cut off wheel and just kind of shave them down a little bit so that I know they'll fit in there nicely and give me a good connection. guys got it kind of skinny down should fit well yep like a glove so I made a video a couple years ago about this swap and I basically said it's simple it's a two wire hookup and really it is you've got your red main charge wire you've got the green with the red stripe the rest just kind of connects to the alternator itself so we get our bottom bolt situated and snugged up and please note that I'm running my wires over to this side and back because I'm building a race truck and I don't want any electronics out here where they can get smashed with a collision or anything like that so I've remounted my batteries inside the truck I've remounted my solenoid inside the truck so I'm gonna route my wiring back and into the truck definitely a size difference in them top bolts that's for sure but lucky for me I've been collecting up all the nuts and bolts and things from taking this race truck apart and these three happen to be the right size to fit that top ear of the new alternator the old 1g style had a bigger bolt and it wouldn't thread in it's an m8 by 1.25 now we grab that smaller bolt and we'll get it started up here into the top ear of the alternator Got to slip the inside belt up over the pulley. Now we'll get the vacuum pump belt up over this pulley. Pulled up this way by that ear of the alternator. Got that bolt snug down. And honestly, the belts don't feel bad to me. You got a slot there, so you got to loosen that nut and that nut right down there on the vacuum pump and then you can push down here which tightens that belt and then tighten those nuts back up now that the belts are tightened up that vacuum pump is tightened up now we'll go ahead and tighten this bottom bolt on the alternator which is the pivot one you don't want it tight when you're trying to rotate up there there we go all right guys so i routed my charging cable back into the truck. I routed my green with red stripe back here to that post on my glow plug relay. That's switched hot and so it will turn the alternator on and off with the truck. My charge cable comes in here to my mega fuse and then from the mega fuse over to the solenoid. The solenoid goes to the batteries 
Now, if you guys have a stock truck, not a race truck build, you only need this wire, which comes down here to the cut harness, and then the four gauge wire, charge wire, with the 175 amp mega fuse up to your solenoid. So now, not only does my truck have minimal wiring just to let it run, but we swapped in a 3G alternator and also we added a new temp gauge, new oil pressure gauge. So let's jump in the truck and check it all out. So we got oil pressure, temp, and volts. We've got all the buttons and switches to turn this truck on and on. Then we turn this switch on. Voltage comes up to about 12 and a half. Now we'll hit the glow plugs. 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, and then start it. Voltage comes up, oil pressure comes up. It'll take a while for that water temp, but everything's working. I'm Aspie, and you're watching The Worth Shop. This is my 89 F250 with a 7.3 IDI diesel engine. We're building into a race truck. As you watch this 7.3 IDI race truck build come along, I really encourage you, if you've got ideas, if you've got suggestions, comments, drop them down below. I tried to respond to all of them. Hit that thumbs up button before you take off if you enjoyed the video. Really appreciated by this small YouTuber trying to grow, trying to beat those evil algorithms. Hit that subscribe button. You want to watch future episodes of us building this old 7.3 IDI into a race truck.